Yeah. Hey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, you're in the right place. Oh. Because it's Al Alex and Jim. It is Alex and Jim. And we analyze Billy Joel lyrics. We do that. This week, there ain't a lot of them. No. Do you remember <laughs> what? What? Hey, what number show is it? Uh, I say uh, it's 96. Perfect. They do it right? Yep. And that's how you know we didn't skip three or four weeks between recordings. Uh, I was about to say that. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, we do have a tiny. It's funny because it is actually a pretty damn good song it's very lovely a lovely song you know i'm thinking about it before listening to it again i thought oh i seem to remember he's trying to be ray charles in this song and then as soon as i put it on it was like classical music yeah it's not ray charles a little classical piece yeah and um i know we're a little early so this is just pre-talking about it yeah yeah but yeah is it an existing classical piece that he based it on, or is it his own thing? Oh, that's a good question. It is I a good don't, question. don't know the answer to that. Yeah, I don't either. But I definitely, I wasn't entirely sure, is this a classical piece until the lyrics were over, which was pretty fast. Pretty fast. And, and then, then it I, was more, uh, tankling. Yeah, and then it was just pretty. I wanted to ask you about this, and I forgot to ask you about this. Oh Hall of Notes. Hall of Notes. <laughs> you are a fan of Hall of Notes. I am. It's good, and for good reason. It's good music. Yup. Could you have imagined Hall and or Oates needing a restraining order? Oh, <laughs> uh, you know, you almost could imagine it. A restraining order. That's wild. Right. Yeah. And I have not followed up like in terms of what's happening like right now with the two of them. Yeah. But the fact that it came to that at all feels like oats. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I mean they... Paul is the one without the mustache, right? Right. Daryl Hall's the taller one. That's right. John Oates is the little guy. <laughs> the guy with the mustache, who I don't think has a mustache now. Yeah. Um, but but a, no I, mustache, I, but a restraining order against him. <laughs> he's not allowed within 500 feet of the mustache. Oh, man. It's wild. But I think if you were, like, I was a lifelong fan. Yeah. And I had all their albums, and I listened to even their weird... Uh, B and C sides. Um, every album has like one or two songs where John Oates takes the lead on lyrics or on singing, and they're never hits. Right. You can tell, like, you can almost feel the arguments that had to be had for him <laughs> to get one song where he was driving. Right. You just, it always felt like, oh, there's resentment brewing here. Yeah. There's someone clearly in charge of this group, and it's not John Oates. Yeah. Also, why is he even here sometimes? Yeah. I mean, Daryl Hall had a couple of solo albums that were great. Yeah, that were successful. Couldn't tell the difference. No. John Oates has a whole other band that you've never heard of. <laughs> Because they're not good, and what they do mostly is open for Hall and Oates. <laughs> um, so it always felt like he was scrapping for more. Yeah, but doesn't certainly doesn't have the voice that Daryl Hall has, and I suspect the talent. I don't know. No, he doesn't. He doesn't. He has the same talent. So I'll I'll two I'll give two examples, and then I'm asking the question. Uh, Simon and Garfunkel, Wham. I'll use Wham as an example because it jumps out at me. Yeah. The, the distinction in Wham being that the other guy knew it and didn't mind. Okay. Like the other guy in Wham was like, no, I'm just the other guy in Wham. And he's very cool with it because he knew. It's like, great. Just happy to be along for the Wham ride. Yeah. So when they brought, so there was no acrimony there. 
when they right. broke up, it was funny in the sense that they were just a couple fellows who liked each other and got along well and made a little band. And one of them knew the other guy was the one. Right. Yeah. But like if you're in Simon and Garfunkel, if you're Garfunkel, for example, how do you fucking think that how do you not know that this <laughs> is unequal and it's fine and you're lucky? Yes, you're a pretty singer. You've great voice. Right. But, but you ain't writing nothing. Yeah. That's the thing. If you're not writing anything, I don't know what you want. And you're certainly not writing things that are considered American classics. No, you're not the voice of a generation by any stretch. By the way, he pissed and moaned about Bridge Over Troubled Water before they recorded it, was kind of a jerk about it. And then <laughs> Paul Simon was kind of mad afterwards, listening to him get all these accolades for this song that ended up being a seminal classic. Yeah. So I find that very funny that you heard this song and went, oh, I got to sing Bridge Over Troubled this dumb br bridge song. <laughs> Why do we have two bridge songs on this album? <laughs> so the Hall of Notes thing, I'm like. He should know. Yeah. Now, I don't know the specifics of what they're fighting about. It could be that Hall tried to fuck him. But it sounds like John was trying to sell stuff <laughs> that yeah. belonged to both of them. Okay. Like what? Like rights to stuff. Oh, okay. Like, oh, yeah, you guys can use a uh, one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> your Marshall, yeah, but, fine with that. But how do you get? So that's one thing. But then we get to restraining order. Yeah. So does that mean Oates is taking swings at Hall? It's. I feel like there's also restraining orders that mean like. Hey, you can't put your hands on these documents. Oh, okay. go into these accounts. Um, it, I don't think it's always, you know, we're thinking of like our white trash friends in Tucson who have restraining orders. Right. I mean, like you can't live in my crawl space. <laughs> um, but I think there are other versions of that. Yeah. Um, that the media is probably deliberately unclear about right it sounds better it's i know it's um it's not a good instinct of me but there's i love picturing them fight <laughs> <laughs> it, i find it very easy to imagine yeah well i picture picture hall putting his head on his hand on his forehead <laughs> oh. and just little guy swinging like in our gang <laughs> <laughs> just swinging away hitting like his jacket <laughs> Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I'm glad I remembered to bring that up because I was like, I bet Alex has at least an opinion about this. I got, yeah, some thoughts. <laughs> I'm, I'm interested to hear what how it comes down on the other end. And you just saw them fairly recently, right? Not really recently. I saw them at the Hollywood Bowl years ago. Okay. With uh, Tig Nataro. For some reason, I was with her and my friend. Um, who, who's friends with her, Allie. Okay. And they played for an hour and a half, and I think it was seven songs. <laughs> they play every they, such long versions of everything with lots of solos and then stories in between. It was very frustrating for somebody who just wanted to hear a lot of Hall & Oates songs. Right. And I was like, I don't want like the battle between the lead guitar and the saxophone that thing oh 10 minutes of that i'm like we all know how it goes yeah oh do the next one well you have already established that you can't go for that let's do something else <laughs> i can't go for that oh well, i would I add no can do yeah <laughs> that's great that's really funny and pretentious and stupid <laughs> ah, it's great you gotta listen to some of their crazy uh, album cuts and b-sides because there's some weird shit 
Yeah. Is it weird and good or just weird? Some of it's weird and good. Some of it's just weird. But you kind of, yeah, it's all different flavors of weird. Um, but it's all, all the singing is great, of course. Mm -hmm. And can wail. Yeah. It's a lot of like, what could you possibly have been thinking? <laughs> that weird ass song. God All in all, it's one of those groups that when I was younger, I liked them, <laughs> but I never developed a love for them. Sure. And I think funny. it's a little bit like, um, oh, what's his name? The Thin White Duke. Um, the Thin White Duke, what is his name? Um, oh. China Girl. Oh, David Bowie. <laughs> David Bowie, yes. Yeah, it's a little bit like David Bowie, where I'm like, I know this is very good music. I might not be smart enough for this. Oh, uh, yeah. I get that with David Bowie, too. I'm like, yeah. everybody tells me this is very important rock and roll. Yeah. Um, it's all right. It's good. Yeah. Not doing it for me. Yeah. It feels a little much. Whereas, like, Billy Joel just makes me comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> it really is just yes very comfortable um i don't normally do this but i have to because i'm so happy with it i thought i've got a new joke in stand up that i'm working on and you know that thing where you think of a joke that's well-worn territory yes but you're happy with the newness of it <laughs> uh -huh. and that you thought of a new take sure you get that. And this is stripper names. This is what stripper names. Right. So here's the bit that <laughs> delights me. Of course, you go see us to a strip club if you've ever been to one. I don't know if you've ever been lonely, but maybe you've been to a strip club. And they'll introduce the stripper, and it's always a fake name. This is Cinnamon or Stallion or something. I like it when the lady gets a fake name, but it's also a normal name as well. When the lit when they say something like "give it up for Susan," and you know that it was someone named Lisa who was like, "I've always wanted to be a Susan." <laughs> Give it up for your next stripper, Monica. So <laughs> that's all there is to it right now. But that amused me. It's an amusing thought, and yeah. I think it's a real phenomenon. It is. It's it is not. I, mean, I haven't been to a strip club in a long time because I'm in my fifties. Yep. And when I was young and I saw a guy in his 50s at a strip club, I always thought, oh, that's pretty sad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or gross. Yeah. Or gross. Both. Gross. Sad, gross. Um, I, you know, was a bouncer in a strip club. Yeah. Um, which is hilarious on the face of it. <laughs> but the name thing was great. Because new strippers would come in without a name and then they would like panic and ask around for a good name to use. <laughs> <laughs> They'd go through five or six different names like it was super important. Like it just has to be different from the other ones. Yeah. Remember. But I always hated it when it was, uh, some of them would go for like a name that's extra cute. Like, that's not what we're doing here. Uh, there was one stripper at this club I worked at named Cricket. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> Cricket is like your tomboy friend. Unless she was a tomboyish stripper. No, maybe in her free time. Yeah. It's kind of hard to do. <laughs> no, I just mean like, like with a bob cut or something. Yeah, no, it would have, it could have worked. Yeah. Cricket. Yeah. yeah, there were some who were like, Lisa. <laughs> Can, is that maybe her real name? That's not smart. It'd be funny if the strippers all used regular names and halfway through the show, they realized, oh, we've just used each other's names. <laughs> that would be great. So everybody's got a real name, just not quite theirs. And you just have to piece it together. <laughs> like, if you're a very yeah, sharp stalker. Club. I'm spending the whole week at the club to solve this mystery. <laughs> it cost me $20,000 to figure out who Beth is. 
<laughs> oh, that's pretty great. Uh, <laughs> give it up for Mrs. Johnson. Huh? Who's <laughs> Oh, great. Mrs. Johnson. Oh, okay. Well, now I, I feel bad for looking at Mrs. Johnson. <laughs> so like I said, she's extra naughty. <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. She's got a tight, her hair in a tight bun, and she's used makeup to make it kind of gray. <laughs> <laughs> like in a school play. You're in a school play, but stripping. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, okay. Now, see, now. Our side project is you and I have to open our own strip club. <laughs> we explain to the girls, listen, this is less about that and more about this bit. Yeah, you but it's a strip, that's fine. Make your money. But you got to help us with this. You got to do this bit. That's our only requirement. So when you strip, you have to look kind of cross. <laughs> Mrs. Johnson. Mrs. Johnson. Oh, that's uh, not bad. Uh, I'd go to that strip club. Yeah. The name of that strip club is You're Wrong for Coming Here. <laughs> Neon Lights. Come in and get your punishment. <laughs> oh, that would do well. No joke. That would do well. Yeah. No alcohol, just like coffee. <laughs> Sunny D. Coffee. Yeah. It was in the fridge. Oh, all and strangely reasonably priced. <laughs> <laughs> it's not what we're here for. So you picked souvenirs. I picked souvenir. Is it? I think it's souvenir. Singular, right? Souvenir. It's one souvenir. Yeah. yeah. One souvenir. Um, it is his shortest song. Yeah. Um, I have always thought it was an interesting choice to. <laughs> write a song that short yeah they figured out why it's that short is this an attempt and not by not musically i wonder if this was inspired by the beatles her majesty it was like oh they did that dingus little short song and yet it's a nice little song i wonder if that's it oh i wonder i don't know that song well I feel like I did it before huh You've mentioned it before, but I don't think I know it. I'll do the lyrics for you. Her Majesty is a pretty nice girl, but she doesn't have a lot to say. Her Majesty is a pretty nice girl, but she changes from day to day. I want to tell her that I love her a lot, but I got to get a belly full of wine. Her Majesty is a pretty nice girl, and someday I'm going to make her mind. Oh, yeah. Someday I'm going to make her mind. Right. That's it. <laughs> Very great. It's a little uh, Herman's Hermits. <laughs> it, but... Yeah. <laughs> and as you might imagine it's just kind of plunked on the end of the album i believe it's on magical mystery tour okay but That's it right. could be on sergeant peppers and then i'm embarrassed it might be on sergeant peppers but actually which album has the end on it oh you're asking the wrong person okay yeah. or day in a life still yeah. ask the wrong person Still the wrong person. Any Beatles song, I'm the wrong person. <laughs> yeah, because I believe it comes on the album. It would just be after uh, A Day in the Life, which kind of is funny because A Day in the Life is a giant song. Right. It just goes on and on. And then Her Majesty is just this little... But I, I also may be wildly wrong. <laughs> so <laughs> Always enjoyable. Yeah. But this song that we're talking about is off of Streetlight Serenade, right? Yeah, Streetlight Serenade is third. Yeah. Not a super successful album, but it did fine. It's got interesting stuff on it, though. Yeah. All the songs are cool. Yeah. None of, not really hits, no. Were there any? There must have been one or two. But I feel like it was... Is this the album where he used Elton John's band originally, didn't like it, and then got his own band? Oh. I think that's true. He started to record. They were like, oh, the record company was like, oh, you can use Elton John's band. And he just was like, I don't like the way it sounds. Yeah. Guys. 
And it's definitely his uh, New York to L.A. album. Yeah. I think is part of the inspiration for this song, which is all about trying to hang on to whatever memories you have. Yeah. How that's a fool's errand. Yeah, you wonder if, so I say, is it like supposed to be his like Beatles thing or is it more or less intention? Is it less intentional? Yeah. I mean, based on the the Billy Joel character that we've created. Yeah. I think it was unintentional and he's like, oh, fuck, I got to fill up the album. <laughs> oh, fuck. I don't want to, but I got to. Yeah. If it is intentional, I'd like to think it's thematic in yeah. that it's like a little scrap of a song. It's like a little souvenir <laughs> of a longer song. Oh, yeah. A lot of the stuff mentioned in the song is like, you know, a stub, from a ticket stub or the program from the play. And this is like a little scrap of the song as a souvenir. Well, I like that. I, I And I could see that being on purpose because it's not... It's not underwritten. It's just what it is. Just what it is. It's it's over. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. At the end. Yeah. It's and classical. It's classical it music. Huh? Could have gone on and on and written more verses, I think, but I don't think it would have gotten you anywhere new. Yeah. Well, and then he'd be yelling at somebody. You know, there'd be <laughs> a thing about why are you holding on to this stuff? Or something would be that the song would suddenly be about. Mrs. Johnson. Yeah, Mrs. Johnson. You've got all these crap books, but who are they for? Are these your memories? Yeah. And uh, well, why do I have to listen to your dumb main memories, Mrs. Johnson? <laughs> oh, motorcycle sound riding away. <laughs> Helicopter sound. Helicopter chasing a motorcycle. <laughs> oh. uh, how do you miss that trick? <laughs> Breaking glass. Yeah, it's, it turns into an action movie. I I think we have talked about this, but it's worth saying again. I do like the cover of Street Life Serenoid. Yeah, we have talked about it. I feel like we tried to find where that is. Oh yeah, <laughs> we we had a whole adventure. That's right. Uh, I mean, it was down somewhere near where you used to live, maybe. Oh, yeah, I, I maybe did speculate that it might have been downtown Tucson. It was just not whatever it is. But it does look a little bit like that theater Yeah, where we used to perform. I think you performed at. Yeah, down by like AKA. That yeah. Place. Yeah, it does have that vibe. Like it's at Theater Theater, I think it was called. Wasn't it? Oh. Or it the place I in know. LA that I performed at. Oh, oh in LA? The complex, my brain, buddy. Yeah. Well, there's this place in LA that we used to do shows when we were doing a lot of sketch, or when I was doing a lot of sketch, and it was this place called Theater Theater, and it was the perfect theater if you like to perform and also were kind of hoping to get caught in a fire. <laughs> oh, great! You know, if you were like, this would be great because if it's caught on fire, we could almost none of us could really get out. Nice. You know, it would be hard to get out. And man, even if we did, ooh, it would be a lingering recovery. And were any of your sketches about that? Uh, no, but in the pre-show, I would say stuff about it sometimes because the place did make me nervous. Yeah, I'll bet. It was a we, weird... Uh, <clears throat> when I first moved to New York and went to a UCB show, their first theater here was terrifying in that same way. Um, and the difference was that I think they mentioned it all the time <laughs> um, during improv scenes. And you could feel the audience, like you could hear them shifting to see where the exit was. <laughs> Only one, and it was behind the stage. Oh, that's so great. Where they came in. There was a show we did called 10 degrees hotter it was a fun little show out of which came uh, my rap group osa um which was a really fun bit um but that place always it felt like it was filled with kindling <laughs> because in the front of the store in the window it was a coffee shop ostensibly it was a coffee shop 
I was never sure how that place stayed in business, to be honest, because none of it really made sense to me. But in the window, it had old books and board games and magazines just stacked. Oh, just the driest. Yeah. Things. And it didn't yeah, and it didn't seem like anybody ever grabbed a board game to set it up and play <laughs> or grabbed one of those books to read. Yeah. It just seemed like the only purpose it was like, well, you know, if we all get tired of it. Up it goes. Oh, I know it's another diversion. We'll get to the song, and I promise you folks, the song won't take long anyway. I used to I Played, uh, did a club. I used to perform at this club called Fenders, where I would do stand up. And Fenders was a really well run bar when I first performed there. Uh -huh. And it got worse and worse. The food got strange. Okay. So, what would happen is I would order a Coke because I wasn't drinking at the time because I'm performing. I don't drink uh, when I perform and I just don't do it. So they'd pull the handle, give me a Coke. Then not that long later, I would order a Coke and they would give me a can. <laughs> and then not long after, sounds like I'm making this up, not. I would order a Coke and they would give me a President's Choice <laughs> cola. Wow. And they served food sometimes. So I'd sometimes order the food, which would sometimes be like hot dogs made in a crock pot or whatever, tacos regularly tacos and i would order the food just because i want to support the place and so here's here's nine dollars sure. i'm supporting the place <laughs> and then one time i ordered a taco and they gave me a lunch meat taco oh oh boy don't you love it you can see places go out of business in super slow motion right yeah and then towards the very end over in the corner, there was just a pile of rags. <laughs> and I was like, somebody's thinking of collecting insurance soon. <laughs> just a pile of oily rags. It was absurd. See what happens. Yeah. <laughs> and wow. it was so strange because they were doing well. They made the mistake a lot of places do, do which is like, Hey, what we're doing is working. Let's try something else. <laughs> uh, it reminds me of uh, the Bronx in the 70s and 80s. They had a problem with the owners just setting their businesses on fire or their apartment buildings on fire to collect insurance. Oh. Uh, it would happen all the time. And uh, <laughs> they referred to it as Jewish lightning. <laughs> Um, and then there was a Bronx beautification project. And one of the things they did was they would go into all these abandoned apartment buildings and hang curtains, uh, just like pretty curtains. So it looked a little nicer from the street. And I thought it's kind of elegant in a way. Yeah. In any way, a solution. But it's almost like a weird art project. Yeah. The nice thing is curtains burn real good, too. Burn real good. That's what I was thinking. I was like, you're just making it easier. Yeah, just it's more kindling. Oh, Lord. What a it world. would be great if it was a trick and it was that it was made of a material that will not burn. <laughs> right. Oh, fire resistant curtains. It's the only thing left of the building. Oh, Lord. Pristine curtains. Well, now here's there's a here's a mystery, Alex. Here's the mystery. One of How do we break up these lyrics? I guess uh -huh. I'll read the first four lines. It really, is just like a little William Carlos Williams poem. Yeah, <laughs> and you read the rest. You go. Yeah, you, you go to holiday. Okay, that works. That seems like almost halfway. Yeah. A picture postcard, a folded stub, a program of the play. You know, I like the rhythm of that. I'll just say that. Yeah. 
I like the rhythm of that more than a lot of his other lyrics. The fun, uh, amusingly enough, it's just a picture postcard, a folded stub, a program of the play. File yep. away the photographs, uh, photographs of your holiday. Nice, nice. I yeah. like that the first three are not; uh, they're just sentence fragments. Me too. Images. Um. <clears throat> It, I think it adds to the whole idea of like, this is just a piece of something. Yeah. You're not getting the whole, you're getting a piece of a song. Yeah. A sentence. And it is the, like the three classic things. Like if you are making a movie and somebody opens a scrapbook in the movie, you're like, all right, then we should put in a postcard. Yeah. A stub and a program from a play. Yeah. That way they'll know that, the audience will be like, ah, scrapbook. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you maybe put one weird thing in, but only if you really intend to draw attention to it. Right. Like then, where... Wes Anderson, you put him all in at right angles. <laughs> yeah. And colors that don't exist in nature. <laughs> <laughs> Has anybody ever done this? Because this would be a great thing to do. Do a movie where there's a stub... And it's but and if you pay close attention, it's for that movie. That's pretty great. I don't think so. That's a good I, idea, right? It's a great idea. Somebody steal that. Feel free. I won't say nothing. I think that'd be great. Yeah, yeah. Although we'll give it a shout out when we see it. Yeah, I'll go. That's me. And then, but you go. No, it isn't. We don't owe you any money. Yeah, yeah. Not us. You're free to row. Free to go. And then it'll be like everything else. <laughs> And your mementos will turn to dust. But that's the price you pay. All right. Now somebody's being lectured. <laughs> Already. Ready. For every year's a souvenir that slowly fades away. Every year's a souvenir that slowly fades away. Dude, this is super impressive because to have that Small a song, but still cram in a lecture is pretty impressive. Yeah. It's a short one. But yeah, your mementos will turn to dust. That's the price you pay. That's... Idiot. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty great. <laughs> pretty great. I was thinking today, I created a little riddle for myself, and then I accidentally solved it in an unsatisfying way. So I thought souvenir is a French word. And then in the song, he says memento, which is either Italian or Spanish. And I was like, oh, you know what? There's no English word for what he's talking about. And then I realized there is. <laughs> and it's keepsake. <laughs> so it was almost a cool observation. And then it wasn't. <laughs> Should I bring that up? That's pretty great. I like... Uh... That's such a fun phenomenon. The difference with you is you realized. I took the extra minute. But I like when people very confidently make those observations that are not right. true. Yeah. I like, did you know there's no month that starts with J? Oh, wait. Except for the one. Except for <laughs> the June and July. In January. But other than that, <laughs> my point stands. <laughs> nah, that's fantastic. It is a pretty song. There's no nonsense. It doesn't feel incomplete. It feels yeah. like it's all it's supposed to be. Feels like, yeah, good short little choice. Um I do I I think the point is like souvenirs don't work. Like you can't hang on to them and they don't remind you. They turn to dust. Metaphorically and literally, yeah. I happen to agree with him. Yeah. I'm, I'm like one or two real keepsakes. Yeah. <laughs> but like the program from the play, you'll never look at again. Yeah. Unless you only collect programs from plays and then you frame them all. Right. Even but he wants to look at them with you. I have a few things. So plays that I've been in, the programs I like. There. 
stand-up shows, I never keep the poster except for one that I still have because I loved it because my name was under the other comic's face and his name was under mine. Yeah. And I liked that because it, it encapsulated everything to me because I was like, yeah, nobody knows who we are. <laughs> yeah. You came Great. to the show. You just want some comedy and you don't give two shits about who I am. And that seems right. That's beautiful. That might have been the same show where one, one show I was not having a great set and it was it wasn't entirely my fault, but it's always at least somewhat your fault because you're the comic. Sure. And this dude heckled me and I went after him for a little while and that fixed my set. <laughs> great. And I was do and then he said, he goes, You're welcome. I'll see you later. And he left the room. I was like, <laughs> huh. Okay. Hard to argue with? No, because he was right. And yeah. it was like, did he really do that on purpose? Because if he did, because his heckle was pretty mild. Yeah. But very audible. So it was easy for me to respond to and nothing. And I was like, is he just a good Samaritan? <laughs> the good Samaritan. He's like, I got to get to another club. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody's dying on the other side of town. He goes to shows and it's a good show. And he watches for a few minutes and goes, they got this. And he leaves. <laughs> That's great. He does drop-ins around town. <laughs> Oh my God. Fantastic. Yeah, he probably gets booked more than me because you need that guy. <laughs> He's going to have a Netflix special. Uh, uh, it's just so funny. That was a bad show. In what, uh, logistically, that was a bad show. Not yeah. the crowd, really, because that was one of those shows where two of the walls were open to the rest of the casino. Yeah. Oh, great. So there's nothing better for performances than ding, 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 ding. Yeah. constant <laughs> flashing lights all the time oh yeah oh my god what a nightmare people accidentally wandering into the into the showroom because they're all that tells you it's a showroom is a post <laughs> nothing that makes it really much of a showroom boy yeah, oh. yeah the, check, the check cleared which was very nice fantastic that is not always true. Yeah. How, yeah. how often do you get fucked these days? Not much anymore. Yeah. You probably A never. lot when I started out. Wow. It's amazing. Yeah. Amazing but I, what... I think it's partly the kind of gigs you take, of course. Sure. Although I will say I have had to chase people down in this industry <laughs> for checks for like award shows that I've worked on and oh. then just, like never got a check and then uh, okay agent my agent has to chase them down and they're like oh yeah sorry we forgot to cut checks oh that's what you're a bad organization yeah do you think they really forgot or did they hold on to it because the few months more of having the cash gives them yeah, they can cook up some more interest. I think also a lot of them are like, let's just not pay them and see if they notice. <laughs> I think there's some of that. Because probably a lot of times they don't notice. Yeah. Oi. Yeah, gross. Gross. What's yeah. happening? Is there, oh, there's plants in the way. Oh, there she is. Hello! <laughs> <laughs> we can barely see you, you is, look it, great. Di is dinner being prepared is that what's going on dinner has arrived okay well we should we should wrap, we should wrap this sucker up so first of all they, this is just about as easy as it could be i was in a hurry oh big shot yeah it's big shot <laughs> he great. had to be a big shot he even wished for it yeah yeah and it didn't work out no nope. it's like in the ah. song he got to have sex with an older lady who now has to live with that forever. <laughs> yeah, we watched that movie not long ago, and it's uh, jarring. It is. 
Like, oh, this is bad. This is a bad scene. She didn't do anything wrong. No, but he did, I guess. Did he? Did he? Also, his little friend was great. That was a great actor. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and when his little friend reacts to the fact that he knows his buddy got sex, it's very funny. Very funny. It's practically a trolley problem, figuring out whether (laughs) or not. Yeah, who's responsible for this and who what could have been done? Meh. Yeah. And you know that I don't know. Did the I think the screenwriter thought about it because it feels like it's kind of included. Yeah. They definitely like let everybody off the hook and as best they could. Yeah. Do you think it's a product just to put a bow on it? Do you think it's a product of its time? In the sense that even now, when you hear about a teenage boy having sex with an older lady, there's still plenty of people who are are like, good for that teenage boy. Sure. I think that pre-exists. Yeah. I think that's always been people's feeling. Yeah. Because boys and girls are different. Yeah, and it isn't until you talk to a boy who had an experience and he's older and you're like, Oh, so you're in a bunch of therapy because that wasn't. Yeah, that wasn't hilarious. That wasn't the magic. And even I know a boy who's a man now, of course, who had that happen when he was young and he thought it was great. Oh, he did. He thought it was great. And it wasn't until years later he realized that it left a bunch of wreckage as far as his ability to have a relationship. Oh, interesting. So even the boy can think it's great, but that's the point of you're not mature enough to know. Right. Of course you think it's great. Right. You'd also think it's great to smoke a cigar. (laughs) Right. right. Yeah, you don't don't have the gauge it takes. Yeah, of course I can drink and drive this car. (laughs) You're 12. Of course you think that. Right. All right, you got some trivia for me? Uh, I do. Oh, nice. Our friend Billy Joel, you know, tried to kill himself once upon a time. Yep. Some furniture polish. Uh, It didn't work out, but he did uh, use it as the inspiration for a song, which I didn't know until today. Um, But apparently it was part of the inspiration for one hit Billy Joel song. And do you know which song? Uh, Second Wind? (laughs) No, that's a great guess. I know it could. I was thinking about this question. I was like, oh, it really could be a lot of songs. Yeah. Oh. Huh. Yeah. It's not Second Wind, because that's about suicide. Right. But it's a hit. It was a hit, eh? Yeah. Well, yeah, a minor hit. Hmm. The, in sleeping with the television on, does he talk about dropping the television in, in a tub? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Okay. I got. I don't got it. What is it? Um, it is. Uh, we we all have a face that we hide away forever. Whoa! Take them out and show ourselves. Everyone is gone. The stranger. Interesting. Wow. Lives inside you is uh, your suicidal ideation, I guess. Oh, you know, that is an interesting recontextualization of that song. Yeah. I kind of want to listen to it again. Me too. All right. So let me ask you. So I got to pick a song. I kind of want to pick two songs and just chat about them. Uh Uh-huh. Um, for next, if you, if you think this is worthy of it, I kind of want to chat about them. I want to chat about the root beer rag and the Mexican connection. Oh, I like it. Yeah. And for those of you who don't know why I get to pick two songs, it's because the lyric count on both these songs is zero. Yeah. I will tell you, and you may know there's one more billy joel song with zero lyrics but not on this album right um no 
Well, those two are on different albums, aren't they? No, they're on this album. Yep, they're on Street Life Serenade. What's the other one? Uh, it's called Nocturne. Nocturne. Well, question for you. Up to you. Do we add it? It's your week, baby. Let's do it. So let's talk about his uh, pieces that just don't have lyrics. Not his classical album. We're not talking about that. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I have a lot to say and ask about that. Nocturne is what it's called? Yeah. Nice. And yeah. uh, and of course, I think both of us have here heard the root beer rag a lot. Oh yeah, man. That That's... was the, the title of his uh his fan newspaper, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. The root beer oh, beautiful. Yeah. Well, listen, everybody, I'm, I'm glad you're doing well. Oh, man, me too.